open. Hey friends, how are y'all doing today? We are starting off our garden tour in a little bit different spot today. We are currently under the umbrella at the table out in the garden. We are under a heat advisory here in South Carolina and have been for a few days now. Basically, we're having a heat wave come through. Our temperatures are soaring during the days and they're not really cooling off at night. Last night, we got down to 70 degrees and it felt amazing. Oh That's the first time in days we have seen 70 degrees. Two days ago, we didn't even get below 90 degrees even at midnight. It was still 90 degrees. So. To hit 70s last night, I am thankful and my garden is thankful because it was looking a little puny with all this heat going on. As many of you know, I don't water my garden generally. We do a bag to Eden method where everything is heavily wood chipped and that way we don't have to garden. Yesterday I did do laundry and so when I was finished doing laundry, I dumped all of my laundry water on my plants after the sun was setting to kind of get them through this heat wave a little bit and I think it helped a lot. Now I did have one more thing going on that's been going on in my garden. As many of you know if you've been here I was having an issue with my beefsteak tomatoes and what looks to be bacterial wilt but I've noticed the past few days our neighbors not right next to us but the property next to them it's a farm and I think they're growing tobacco over there and they're spraying something on their plants. It kind of smells citrusy, almost like a citronella candle going on. I mean, it's pretty strong even all the way over here. So I'm kind of wondering if maybe it wasn't bacterial wilt and it's whatever they are spraying on their plants that's drifting. I know tomato plants can be more sensitive to certain chemicals than other plants are. So I'm wondering if it's not bacterial wilt, but it's whatever they are spraying over there. And because my beef steaks are here in the open where the rest of them are kind of shielded by other plants, if maybe that is what is going on. So if you grow tobacco or know somebody who does and you know what that would be that you would spray on tobacco leaves that smells very lemony, citronelly. If you know what it is, could you let me know? Uh, I've tried looking it up and I know many people are gonna say just go ask them nobody lives there it's just fields and I don't know when they come and go they will randomly show up on their tractors they don't like have a set schedule or anything and I am a pretty big introvert I don't like strangers I don't like being in new situations and so to actually get up and go over there and speak to them that would be a pretty big deal for me so I may end up resorting to that, but I'm actually going to do the hard way and try to figure it out on my own before I resort to going over there and asking them what they're spraying on their fields and if maybe that is drifting over to our garden and our property. I'm really hoping whatever they're spraying is an organic type deal, but I highly doubt it. We are surrounded a lot by fields and they tend to rotate what they're producing. Last year it was major cotton fields. I mean they were cotton everywhere. This year we've got tobacco and corn growing on and this field over here I don't know what they've got. It hasn't really come up yet so I'm not sure what's over there. But the tobacco is closest to us and then corn right after that. But I have a feeling that may be drifting over and causing some issues on our garden as well. So we're going to get on with our garden tour today. We actually will be taking it fairly slow because of the heat advisory and how hot it is. We've each got our waters we're drinking and we're just going to do it little bit by little bit. So if you notice the sun is starting to go down or changing or whatever, it's because we're just going to do it a little at a time. I mean, it's it's 80 degrees before it's, you know, the sun's really up in the mornings right now. So <laughs> there's no real beating the heat at this moment. So this is my beef steak. These are basically the only two beef steaks I have left in my garden. And they are starting, ah, there's a hornworm. Ah! Excuse me, sir, you are not welcome in this garden. You are not welcome here. Look at that. They've been eating my tomatoes. Do you see that? Yeah. Thank you. 
Y'all, it's the first hornworm I have found in my garden so far this year. I'm so sad. I was hoping maybe since this is a new garden that they would not find us. I know, I know, false hopes, but I was still hoping. But they found us. They're here. But what I was saying about my beefsteak tomatoes before I found the hornworm is this one is starting to have some wilty spots on it. And so I was a little concerned, you know, that whatever's drifting could be causing that. It could also be heat stress from the heat wave we are under. So I've tied it up to keep it from wilting all over the ground and we will see if that helps the situation some. Maybe that's an orange tomato. Orange tomato. Yeah, we got a few tomatoes and, and our beta lux tomatoes that are turning orange, huh? Yeah. We gotta wait till they're red before we start picking, okay? Uh -huh. So I've actually already had my first garden harvest and I did not film it for y'all. I'm sorry. It was a whole handful of cilantro, one red tomato that was about this big, and one banana pepper that I chopped up and put on some chicken tacos the other night and it was so good. Oh my goodness. That fresh cilantro on there was amazing. And even though we are 100 degrees out here, my cilantro looks fantastic. Fantastic. Now I do have both slow bolt and regular cilantro in here and so I mean it's it's doing pretty well especially for this heat so I'm super excited about that. Cilantro does not like hot weather but I do have it in a shaded area that gets mostly shade throughout the day and it's doing pretty well. These are cucumbers. Well, I don't think any of these are ready yet. We'll have to check our other cucumber plants. We have a little cucumber that's growing right here. And another little one over here. Yeah. But good. I don't see any ready to pick yet. Let's check these squash. Oh, y'all. Now, y'all know that I hadn't been able to see any squash going. And I've only seen male squash plants. I found baby squash. Look! It's a baby squash. They're so cute and little. If you couldn't tell by their shape, they are scalloped yellow squashes is what I have growing over here. And I can't wait for them to get big enough that I can pick them and try them and eat them. Yay! We had some peppers right here. Something is eating my peppers. This one doesn't even have a top anymore. Neither does this one. This one's got a little bit. I don't know if we have a wild rabbit friend or what out here, but something is eating my peppers. Over here in this tomato bed, as you can see, this, this tomato is looking a little wilty. Help mommy look for the green worms. Do you see any? No. No? I mean, they're still looking decently considering the heat we've got going on. This one's pretty wilted. I've got some pretty good Amish paste tomatoes coming in on here though. I see hornworm poops. So there's got to be a hornworm somewhere. Uh, these peppers over here are doing fairly good. They're flowering. Oh, look! I have a pepper! Yeah, that one's a good It's a banana one. pepper. We're going to let him get a little bigger before we pick him. And eat it. You can really see how wilty we are from the back side. I've got tomatoes coming in. We're getting a little yellowish. Now these over here are my San Marzano tomatoes. So far, they still look beautiful. Mm. I do. Oh, holy goodness. That's a big old hornworm there. Do y'all see him right there? Come here and quit eating my tomatoes. Yeah, on the tomatoes. Oh, man. I need the cappers. I need the cappers. He is a big one. Yeah. Oh. It's a green one. Yep, he's green. Let's get rid of him. Again. Oh. What is that? Oh my goodness. What are those? Look at that. What are those? Oh, that? Mama dropped it. What is that? I can't. You eat see it? where he was eating my tomato? That's craziness. Can you eat it? You can't eat it. He, the worm was eating it. Yeah. Another one. Mama's looking for other ones. There is hornworm poop everywhere. So I would be surprised if there's not another one. Oh, he was a big old hornworm. Yeah. So this down here is where we had some dog vomit mold fungus. 
and that's what it looks like after it dries up. Now, if you are already on my Instagram, you've probably seen the reel I shared about the dog vomit slime mold fungus that was on my plant. It is actually a slime mold, not a fungus. It doesn't hurt your plants where you're at or anything like that. It grows where you have a whole lot of moisture, but it spreads very, very easily. So if you've got it once, you're more than likely going to have it again. We have had it several times here on this property. It shows up in our compost bins, in our mulch, on our plants. Anywhere that retains moisture, you are gonna get it. It spreads through the wind, so it's not like you can just stop it. And if you mess with it or disturb it after it dries out, it's gonna spread. It doesn't hurt you. It's not gonna hurt animals. It doesn't technically hurt your garden. It just feeds on decaying matter. And I just let it basically do its thing. Ah, what is that? I don't know what that is. A grub? What is that? There's another one. We need to start a chicken bucket. We need a bucket. Yeah. You got a bucket we can put these grubs in and go feed them to the chickens? Yeah. Okay. Oh, there's so many of these grubs. Oh. Y'all are going to be chicken food, man. Chicken food. I don't even have any potatoes down here. Do y'all eat potatoes? Now I need to pull out the rest of these potatoes. Are we doing apples? No, there's like a lot of them. Yeah. Ugh. Oh, mama needs her gloves. Ah! So I think I pulled out six so far. All right, well, let's pull up these other potatoes and see if they got grubs that are eating them too. Need another Yeah. Hey, there's a grub. There's another one. Mommy, there's another grub. Look, we got some potatoes out of this. Yeah. Little ones. Well, I probably could have let them go longer, but that's okay. Now, these potatoes probably could go longer, um, but they're all falling over, and they're getting to the point where they're shading out and crowding out my peppers, yeah. and I'd rather have more peppers considering I have an entire potato bed back there. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these. I'll cook them up for dinner tonight. And Kenneth and Declan will enjoy having fresh potatoes from the garden. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, there's a pretty good one. Yeah. Oh, the small one. Some fairly decent sized small potatoes. One. Oh, you found a small one? Yeah. And All right, that's one. it. All the potatoes are pulled. I, I find a small one. Okay. okay. I do good? have little baby peppers coming on here. And I go to get some peppers. I think these are my red Marconi peppers, and it looks like this plant has three on it right now. This one has two babies on it right now. Um, this one has three babies with more blossoms. So we definitely have peppers in our future and I'm super super excited about that because I will be making pepper jelly once my peppers are harvestable and I can get them for my pepper jelly. That is one of our favorite things. I love pepper jelly poured over some cream cheese. Oh my god it is so good. If you have basil I highly suggest you go through and pick off your tips right now. If you do not keep your tips pinched off when it is hot your basil will go to seed and then it changes the flavor of it and it's not something you'll want to eat then. My beans on my trellis are getting pretty and lush. Still no beans coming on yet though. They're hanging out in the heat though. They're just not setting blooms at this point. My cucumbers on the other hand over here are looking fantastic we probably could go ahead and pick a few of these like this one here and oh yeah this one down here this plant is loaded with blossoms they are everywhere these are cucumbers the only thing is it's still pretty, like, spiny. I guess I could wop that off. Declan, do you want to try it? Yeah. 
open it. Open All right, it take a bite and try it. Let me see. It's white. It's white. Is it yummy? Yeah. Whoa, that was a big bite. Can mommy try it? Yeah. Thank you for letting me try it. Try it. Mm hmm. Good. Pretty good. Did you know eating cucumbers when it's hot out can actually help keep you cool? What is that? You want another bite? Yeah. So, over here, I have more peppers. I think these are jalapenos. I do have some little beady, beady jalapenos coming on here. I mean, they're like small right now. This is my spicy pepper bed, so every pepper in here is a spicy type. Um, this one's pretty tall. I don't remember what it is, but it got tall, man. Mommy, you buy these peppers? Yeah, these are spicy peppers, so we don't pick this bed, okay? Right. My okra is steadily growing. Ooh. I don't see any okra pods yet, but we are getting fairly tall. Yeah. This okra will get tall enough that it reaches all the way to the top of this cattle panel. So it is nowhere near growing as tall as it should just yet. My zucchini is getting huge. I haven't seen any zucchinis growing yet. I have zucchini blossoms. But no, but no zucchinis yet. It's pretty disappointing to me so far that I don't have any zucchinis growing. I eat low carb. You've probably picked that up in a few of my garden videos now. And one of my favorite breakfasts that I have really, really been obsessed with here lately is doing like a breakfast hash, but instead of potatoes in it, I use young zucchini or skinny zucchini, ones that don't have like big seeds in them. I usually skin them and then chop them up. They look very, very similar to potatoes at that point. They don't taste like potatoes, but they're a really good addition to a breakfast hash. Uh, the past few mornings, I've done sausage, eggs, zucchini with a little garlic and onion, salt and pepper in it. It is so good. Um, once my bell peppers and stuff come on, I will add those in there as well. Green bell peppers are lower in carbs than red or orange bell peppers, so I will pick a lot of them still green. And I'm super excited about it. I love being able to feed my low carb diet based on things I grow in my garden. Now, I do grow a lot of carb heavy foods as well. Declan and Kenneth both eat carbs. And generally, a balanced diet is best for you. So I want them to eat carbs as long as they can eat carbs, you know, and they really enjoy them. Uh, so I just don't eat that. So I do grow carb heavy foods for my family, like the potatoes we picked together today will be part of Kenneth and Declan's dinner tonight. They will be super thrilled to have that. I will make low carb veggie options as a side for me and I just skip the potatoes. So you can make it work. I eat basically a double portion of meat compared to them and then a low carb veggie and they'll eat meat, a high carb veggie and a low carb veggie. And that works for our family. We just make do and everybody's happy. I just want y'all to notice how tall my corn is back here. Go sit next to the corn. All right, stop right there and look at mommy. Whoa, look how tall that corn is. That corn is getting so beautiful. It is so green. I have not seen any tassels form on it yet, but it just looks gorgeous. You wanna walk through the corn again? Yeah. I'm doing it again. Did you wanna do it again? Yeah. I'm having fun. <laughs> You're having fun? Yeah. I'm doing it again. He wouldn't know what to do with like a 20 acre cornfield. I mean, this ain't nothing. 
it's like 20 feet long and he's having fun just running through it. So bean check-in, these things are still getting taller. They have now just started winding themselves together to support themselves and they're continuing to grow. As long as they're gonna grow, we're gonna let them grow. Yeah. These beans are our favorites because they're doing the best. I mean, it is loaded with these beautiful red blossoms. They are everywhere. This is the black coat runner bean from Baker's Creek that is making these just gorgeous little red blossoms. So my stevia check-in, look how many hats I've got on it now. Look, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven little stevia heads. So this will branch out and get huge. Get food. Now I planted more cucumbers over here and as you can see they have sprouted. So they are getting there. Holy goodness at that worm. What is that, mommy? What is that? What is it? That is a monster worm. We're going to feed that to the chickens. Okay. And get it. Ew! I got worm poop on myself. Go. There's three of them. Well, I broke him in half, so there's two of them. Yeah. I don't know if y'all know this, but there are some invasive worm species. And I think one of them is called a jumping worm. And anytime I notice a worm that is not acting like other worms, like that one crawling across the top of the mulch in daylight with the sun beating on it, that's not normal worm behavior. Worms do not like to be exposed to the sun. They dry out very, very quickly. And so they have to stay under the mulch. So anytime I notice a worm doing anything unusual, it's gotta go. If you don't have chickens or something who will eat it right away, like you don't want this to burrow into your ground, you take and you put it in a clear Ziploc bag and set it out in the sun and it will bake to death. And that sounds awful, but much better than having an invasive species in your garden that eats all the nutrients and leaves nothing behind for your plants. I don't know for sure that that is an invasive worm species, but like I said, better safe than sorry. These are Cockazelle zucchinis on this side. The cucumbers were on the other side. So we will see how they do. On this side, these over here are Space Master cucumbers. These were my pea beds that I ripped up. These Space Master cucumbers are the ones from earlier in the video that was so loaded with blossoms. That is the same type that this is, a Space Master cucumber. Oh. And then on this side of the Space Master cucumbers, I have acorn squash growing up. My potatoes over here have all started dying back. Um, they're all done flowering, so I will probably give them another two weeks. All right, guys, so we're going a little backwards today. Normally, I start my garden tour coming through the entranceway into my garden, but that's where we're going to end it for today to stay out of the sun's way today. As you can see, my sunflowers are getting fairly tall. They are about five and a half feet tall now. Some of them are even bigger than that. Like this one, <laughs> it is probably six feet tall. I don't see any heads yet. Yeah, no heads on them yet, but hopefully soon. But they are huge and I am loving it. Well friends, that is this week's garden tour. Thank you for joining me going through the garden. We have an apron full of potatoes. We got to eat our first cucumber out of the garden. And so I call that a great day. Plus, we got some awesome bugs to go feed the chickens. Let's go do that together real quick, and we'll finish out this vlog by giving the chickens a tasty little treat. You want to go feed the bugs to the chickens? Yeah. All right, we'll see if they like them. You ready? Yeah. I don't think they've even heard. Ah, oh, man. Really, chick? We can't get back in that way. Really, chicken? See if I ever bring you bug treats again. If y'all don't watch my vlogs, you probably don't know that I'm scared of chickens. And now I've got to catch one. I will never bring them bug snacks again. Go to that side and 
and chase her back towards mommy. Okay. Other kind. Other, oh, wait, here she comes. Keep coming, keep coming. Come on. No, 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 don't go in there, don't go in there. Oh, no! No! Dad, come it! I need a net. I'll give her one more try. Take the apron off so I don't lose my potatoes. There, chase her to mommy. Keep going. Keep going. Come towards her so that she'll come to mommy. Oh, man. We're not making it any better. This did not go according to plan at all. Are you almost home? Yeah, I'm on. I accidentally let one of the layer chickens out when I was feeding them bugs and I can't catch it. I'll be there in a minute. I love you. Love you. Bye. Mm. Well, evidently it thinks it's going to get in with the meat chicken. Mm -hmm. watch all the way to the end totally missed out so if you watched to the end of this video <laughs> and you got to see me battle my fears against chickens let me know <laughs> and if you haven't seen my vlogs fair warning once the meat chickens are butchered we're out of meat chickens we will only be keeping layered chickens and they will hopefully be in a pen with where they can't get out <laughs> And I don't have to deal with it anymore. So until next time, friends. Bye now. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Oh my goodness.